I am back with more views of UK. This time I am going to show you around Scotney Castle, a 14th century moated castle, a Victorian county mansion, and the stunning picturesque garden with over 770 acres of woodland to explore. Scotney Castle is located at the border of Kent and Sussex, about an hour's drive away from London. This place is open all year, offering a variety of walks through the beautiful parkland and woodland. A breathtaking array of colors, autumn is a beautiful season to visit Scotney with your family, and dogs are permitted to come As you walk down the hill, you will have the first glimpse of the medieval castle in the distance. Walking on the ground covered with autumn leaves is quite beautiful. This 14th century castle provides a romantic view for the new house which is situated at the top of the hill. The castle was built by Roger Ashburnham in 1378 in response to the threat of French invasion. As no French invasion ever came, it was always more fortified manor house than a fortress. This was the home of the Darrell family for 350 years. In the mid-18th century, Darrell's family was forced to sell Scotney due to family squabbles which lead to lawsuits and therefore joined the family resources. Edward Hussey bought the castle in 1778. Due to family problem and misfortune, the family left the castle and moved to St. Leonard's, but to retain ownership of the castle. In 1835, Edward Hussey's grandson, another Edward, Edward III, decided to move back to Scotney and build a new house. A grand mansion which we saw briefly at the beginning of this tour and we will be heading shortly. Edward Hussey chose 
Anthony Salvin, the young architect to build his new house. The construction began in 1837 using a streaky golden sandstone dug from the quarry immediately below the house. It was completed in 1843. Inside the house is a large collection which features many artworks, books and furniture, as well as stories about previous inhabitants. Scotney Castle has been in the ownership of the National Trust since Christopher Hass's death in 1970. The house remained the private residence of his widow until 2007 when the house was first opened to the visitors. Let's end the tour back at the cafe and shop where you can enjoy a delicious meal in the tea room or you can buy a garden items or tasty local produce. I hope you enjoyed the tour and see you again in our next adventure. If you have not done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so you can join me on my next adventure.